Put it over on yours, on you. I'll put it on over on you. Fuck that. That way you can read some of the questions while I'm trying to... No, you're good. I tried that already. Logan, what's up, dude? Oh, Mez is on? Yeah. Mez is hot. Going hot with Logan. <laughs> That's good, dude. Look what we got from the infamous rush, our stack of stuff. We got most of the questions here, guys. Um, don't worry, we're just gonna do a little bit of a intro like we always do. I just wanted to, Keith got me going live here a little bit on Instagram. Hopefully that you guys can hear us. Turn the volume up. Let me know if you can hear me all right. Let me eat that up. Set your phone up off the desk. Remember, get a, get a, How about this? Get a rear bag. No, get a rear bag. Really? Yeah, because otherwise you hear every time you hit the table or anything comes through. Oh, oh I got gotcha. you. Sorry, guys. Thing is, is, dude, I should let you have that phone. Here, we'll set it right here. And kink it at you. Because then it, oh, I, you can see, I can't see over that far. I'm getting old, dude. My eyes, I can't see. I need LASIK. <laughs> hey. All right. All right, fellas, we're gonna do a bit of an intro here first. Let me eat a little bit of coil. Some 290 pound coil. <laughs> Don't break it, I want, I want some. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go. Those are hot, dude. All right. Don't forget to hit record. I got it. We're hot now, we're recording. What's up, guys? I'm James O'Neill. You're here with O'Neill Ops, and this is the Predator Hunter Podcast. This is the place where we break it down. We go into detail with the equipment that we use and how we use that equipment application specific. Today, we're going to be kind of revisiting a topic that we touched base on, I think, a couple times. Thermal. I did a little poll here on Instagram. Some of you guys are watching but we got about 60 guys and I took a lot of notes down from the poll that I took earlier on this afternoon. And we do, for those of you guys that, that don't know, we do have a couple podcasts up that go over thermal and night vision. One of them is, I think it's episode number three, maybe where we did the, the thermal and night hunting or night vision, sorry, thermal and night vision legislation that we went to peer in our state capital and passed. We did some detail on that, and then we also did a, a podcast with Rich and Tyler uh, at Ultimate Night Vision, and Rich, like we said, knows his shit. He, he, he went into elaborate detail on a lot of the stuff, a couple of the questions that guys were asking regarding, uh, you know, the, the, the sensors, the, the, the core, the resolution, the display, all that. You guys can find those kind of details on that podcast. So go over there and look at it. I don't remember what episode that is, but it's it's Ultimate Night Vision and it's available on our on our podcast. It's, it's on YouTube now and it's also on, on the Anchor platform, Spotify and iTunes. We have uh, Keith was with us. Keith Rissy is the co-host. So he's going to be chatting with us tonight also. He's here pretty much most of the time. And we do have, like I said, a whole page of stuff. We just wanted to go uh, Instagram live so that, so that uh, you know, you guys can kind of hear this first before it takes me a couple days to get this up on on the on the anchor platform, and even more so, a few days, if not a week or so, to get it up on YouTube. So we're gonna go into detail here on Thermal Guys with the questions that you wanted. I, I, honestly, I don't care. I don't, I don't, I don't give a shit if we're, if we're, 
talking about the same thing multiple times a year, there's always advancements or something that we something might different brought up something that we might forget. Yep. Or that, that like in, in the, in the realm of thermal and night vision, something newer. And what I think sparked the thermal with you guys is, uh, the, the, the IRA video that, that we just put up about less than a week ago. The little teaser you put on or the 30, the 30 kills, yeah, 30 yeah. kills yeah. and the teaser too. Yeah. The, the, the kill box teaser was definitely a, a little eye opener or what's to come, I guess. Yeah, and, and if if I seem shaky, fellas, I am. I'm we're we're smoking some. <laughs> Abby got us some nasty ass coffee, and it's getting to you. So I tried to with a limited time. I tried to get some of this stuff halfways organized regarding not jumping around from you know similar questions put together. But I can't promise you that's how we're gonna pull these apart and break them down. Organized chaos, and it's never organized. That's good. <laughs> Chaos is fuck. That's good. Too. <laughs> Not as good as your other idea today. Yeah, I will leave that on the back shelf for now. So let's start in. Uh, I, I didn't write down who wrote, who asked these questions. In in a lot of these, <sighs> Mitch said, "You pussies need some bangs." <laughs> <laughs> That's good, dude. That's right, though. We will next time. It when less comes on, we'll maybe we'll <laughs> say no more Java, bro. It's going bang town. Bang town. Anyway, uh, Mitch, are you done hunting already? You, you hang it up for the season up there or what? Oh, that's funny, dude. Okay, so what we I didn't write down the the fellas names or their usernames or screen names with the associated question that they asked. So you'll just have to kind of pay attention. But uh he said he's done. Yes. Okay. The one of the the first question that I kind of organized, and this might be turned into a, uh, what, how, how, oh, nice, dude, cool. So it might turn into more of a uh, questions and answers seminar or session, I should say, not seminar, but it, nonetheless, we'll we'll get into it. We might kind of stray. We're just kind of kind of BS a little bit and go into some details that that we may have missed, like I said in some of our other podcasts. But let's get to it. So we had a fellow that asked, set up. For someone on a budget, what would you guys, what's a good setup for someone on a budget and cost? That's probably one of, all of these are going to be really redundant questions, fellas. There, there's so many questions about this that are real similar, but that's a really popular question. How do I get into it? I've got a limited budget. Uh, I get a lot of emails from guys that, that, hey man, I see your videos. I want to get a thermal. And then you, you tell them what the cost is of the unit that you're using in the video that they saw. And they're like, never reply back Yeah, because yeah. they don't understand. And you see that side of it more than I do. I don't. I don't deal that aspect. I guess but you just use the good shit and kill with it. It's what you do. <laughs> I, I you I always catch you saying, "Well, if you can afford this one, save for another six months and get the next step." That's exactly right. You know, hundred percent. That's exactly what I was going to say. If uh, if most guys are like, you know, man, I'm on a two thousand dollar budget or a three thousand dollar budget. I've been there. I can tell you. I in, in high school, man, I had a. a fetish with this kind of stuff. And I had an old gen one, an AMT Aries. I don't know. Don't uh, 6,600. 6, I can't even remember. It, it, I wanted it so bad. I bought it, right? I, I blew whatever it was, 1200 bucks at the time. It was a lot of money at the time. And I should have just waited for a gen three. I should have just saved up my money and got a gen three because I eventually did. And it was literally night and day difference. And the same principle relates to thermal. Now we're kind of getting to a tipping point, I think, where there's some awful good affordable stuff out there. But I'm telling you what, man, to just to just to start this off, if you're gonna freaking run a race, you got a Taurus and you got a Ferrari, or you're gonna freaking go Bahan across the, the pasture, and you got a regular F one fifty, you got a Raptor, which one's gonna win? Obvious, you know. Now now force multiply it. Say you know how to drive the Raptor and you know how to drive the Ferrari, you're gonna be that much more advanced. Yep. Okay, now a lot of guys are like, well, I can drive the car and get from point A to point B just fine. I don't need to have an expensive one. That's fine, dude. More power to you. Awesome. Good. But if you have a specific skill set or you have an opportunity like we do to be able to utilize this equipment a lot of the nights, it's a force multiplier and it is a no-brainer for us to get into the good stuff. And most of the time, like Keith said, what I tell you, save your money, man. Save it. 
Yeah. Don't go drop 2000 or 3000 because there's a certain point where you're literally throwing your money into the wind. Yep. And I'm not trying to pop a bubble or burst your bubble or deter you from wanting to get into the game. If you're going to maybe go out a couple nights a year and you're like, I just can't justify that cost, but you still want to spend a few thousand bucks, maybe. Yep. And how long before or after they buy their thermal? Uh, how long before they buy a scanner? Do you see, you know? Well, most of the guys that are getting into the thermal, dude, are getting with, they, they get, they look into a weapon site and they're like, dude, how can I make myself more advanced? Yeah. So very soon. There's a select few guys that, that are listening that have, that, that, that have, uh, you know, that have, have killed a lot of coyotes that don't get, they, they spend all the money on it and they know what they're doing. Most guys, unfortunately, aren't aren't like that and we're not i don't really want to put people into into different categories but right unfortunately that's yep. it, there is so it, on a budget man i know i didn't really give you a detailed answer but a few thousand dollars is really nothing when you're looking into the night hunting game it's nothing no it's it's, it's a fraction right a, a literal fraction that seriously might get you barely started to be honest you know I I I got a, a and, little, and what's a guy what's a guy that's on a budget for say, is he hunting once a week? Is he hunting every other week? You know how many how many how many coyotes are you wanting to you know how often are you going to hunt? And it's there's a lot of things like if if you have if you have valuable fur, yeah. you can make an yeah. annual payment. You could pay yeah. that thing off if you do right. enough damage. Yep. Uh, I sold one to a local rancher here. Got him into an XQ50, a Pulsar for right around. 4500 bucks because he got some extras with it and plum fine for him he'll probably shoot a dozen coyotes with it a year maybe maybe right maybe yeah. from the some of the stories we've heard good good dude but i mean yeah. i'm just saying no so you know it's a tough one man on a budget and cost i personally to be honest if i'm just gonna be a straight shooter i i'm gonna say save up for five grand i mean save up for something that's in that five thousand dollar mark because you're gonna be I thought that was three going on. You're going to be going, you're going to be so much happier. You're going to be like, man, James, I'm so glad I listened to you and saved up. Yep. Big time. Now, uh, we're, we're not going to get cocky here, but we're going to have some confidence. I mean, what, what some guy mentioned, what should I be looking at before purchasing? And to be honest, talk to guys like us. All right. There's not, a, there, there's, there's, it's like suppressors, man. You'll hear us say it again. There's Kool-Aid drinkers out there. They'll buy one can. It'll be from one manufacturer. And therefore, guess what? It's the best. That's the furthest. Right now, we're, we're lucky as shit. We're not bought and paid for. You know, a lot of these guys on TV are saying literally this shit is the best because it's yeah. what they're getting yeah. money for to and promote. And that's all they've ever ran. All how, they've ever how ran. Do, how do they know it's the best? In you know? And I, I really, honestly, have you ever heard me tell anybody? I've never heard you say that what we use is the best. Right. It's it. There's always something out there. There might be something I like better. Like you run the Mark or the Mark Three. I've never ran that. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's the best. Exactly. I know, you know, I, I don't know. I can tell you what we've ran or what I've ran and and what works or what I like. You know but I don't know what I'm not going to say what the best is. Yeah. So it's, it's, that's unless we, you've, you've looked through the Mark three, right? Sure, I've looked through sure. the reap that yeah. you've used a lot. Yeah. You get familiarized I with mean, it as far as running a whole season on it or anything like that. Yeah. I've shot a coyote with one. Sure. But as far as putting it through the ringer or doing whatever. Exactly. So that's, that's, that's right on the money. I mean, without, Listen, listen to guys and don't, I mean, don't just, you can listen to us. We'd appreciate it if you listen to us, but don't listen, just listen to us. I mean, there's other guys out there, but right now we're in a pretty damn fortunate position where sure we can get a lot of shit out there. We use a lot of stuff, but we don't have any kind of legit written contracts with certain companies saying, Hey dude, you guys, yeah. look, look at Joe, look at Joe, look at black snow. <laughs> <laughs> was it him he might have been he did dude i bet he did he probably did hey 
I'm not going to deny that shit. So anyway, that's, this is something that you listen to guys that have, you know, some extensive use with numerous products. The same thing. That's part of what we do. Take advantage of it, guys. Take advantage of somebody like us that has ran a hundred different makes, models, manufacturers, suppressors, just because I might go out there and use one thing and, or Keith might go out there and use one product and murder the holy hell out of coyotes and kill 150 or 200 in a month doesn't mean that that is the best product out there. It's working awful good for him. But that's not even really what we do because we're getting tons of different stuff throughout the year yeah. to be able to use. And we'll get into that here. So what, what to look at before purchasing? Man, information is worth its weight in gold. Yeah, as I mean, as many, you know, Instagram, anything, you can talk to anybody, you know, see what they've ran, see what they like. There's the, you, you can Google it. Yep. You can get on all these forums. There's Facebook yep. forums, all sorts of stuff. So there's a lot of information out there. Don't, don't hesitate to reach out. We do get a lot of questions and it, it's tough. It's getting tougher because the interest is growing, but nonetheless, we, we try. Uh, now we've got another, we're just going to keep on rolling. That's only question number two. And there's like 30 of them. Thermal versus night vision regarding LR accuracy, long range accuracy. I've had guys, yeah, dude, this is a podcast. It's a podcast, but it's Instagram live. So it'll be up on YouTube uh, in probably a few days. Um, or, so uh, I better stick to this. <laughs> My fucking alpha brain's running overboard, dude. So, uh, so regarding thermal versus night vision, long LR accuracy, long range accuracy, night vision, hands down. I've got guys that go, Hey man, I want to buy a thermal and, and I want to be able to shoot four or five, 600 yards with it. It's tough, dude. Unless you're going to drop the coin. Tyler came out one year and we used his UTCX two and got some time behind it. A 25 to $26,000 thermal clip on unbelievable. It, unbelievable. If I could afford it, that would probably be one of my go-tos other than the fact that it's going to be tougher than hell to record with. Right. Which is, yeah. If you're in flat out murder mode, that's it, dude. Yep. You, you design a rifle, you build a rifle, you put an EFR on it, you snap that bitch on and your daytime zero is the same as your nighttime. Your dope is the same. You freaking crank up and kill with it. Yep. Done. But unfortunately that's not, you know, like I said, that's, you're looking at close to 30 grand. So if you want to get into the long range accuracy night vision, man, but then you've got to factor in some kind of artificial light source. You have yep. to wait for either a, a good moonlit night starlight or like when Michael Boclieri from loophole came out, remember that torch he called? Yeah. Had? Yeah. A, a, a nasty IR. He said, don't you even don't think look about into it. You're done. instantly blind. And you, we looked at it. You looked at a thousand, twelve hundred with oh, it. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, unreal. Yeah. Just boom, just a, yep. just a spot all the way through. And I mean, you could see it. if there was a coyote out there, you could see it. Yeah, stupid good. But the fact of the matter is, you you, you can you could see them, but you can't really detect them with that. Right. You know, there's a give and take for long range precision work. Absolutely, night vision. Some kind of a night vision clip on unit is going to be the way to go for that. Thermal, man. In all honesty, when we tell guys the closest that we take shots is, or the furthest, I should say, maybe a couple hundred. Yeah. Max. I'm a firm believer. And we run in, the night vision, but it's, it's, uh, we use it for, uh, for, I mean, we don't have it on any, any guns or anything. More for nav. Yeah. Navigation strictly, really. We've got some kill box stuff with night vision, but as far as night vision itself, I mean, we're almost strictly just navigation with it. And strictly weapon sight, we thermal weapon sights. Right. Yeah. Yep. We have got some PVS-30. I'll probably incorporate some of that footage into the kill box because it's good. Yeah. You, you got some good stuff with that. Yeah. Yep. This year too, early. Right. Early. Because yep. we didn't have the thermals yet. Yeah. So that's, you know, I hope I hope we're getting those those questions. Um. Uh, kind of, kind of laid out for you in a, in a, uh, some, some good information for you. Uh, and that's kind of, then the next question mounted, you know, a, a mounted thermal weapon site is what I got from this guy versus a handheld. All right. Well, that's another question I get quite a bit. Yep. You know, what's better fellas, you know, do, should, should I get a, a, a little $3,000 handheld scanner and then, and use it to detect, get to a set, uh, scan with it and then pick up wherever the coyote is detect it, And then maybe make the transition to my night vision or a cheaper digital optic or a light 
for that matter, you know, a, a light on top of the rifle. Yeah, I've never done it because we've never had to do it. Right. But it's something that you could 100% do. Or they're like, well, would I be better off going strictly weapon sight? Where then you're you're having to probably more so shoulder the rifle and put it on a tripod, which you can do in glass 180 or right. full 360s. Right. Yeah. What we do, obviously, I mean, we had the helmet-mounted scanners. And then we also have each weapon as its own weapon sight. But... I, I don't know. I would, I would stick with a, you know, a, a scanner and then also a, a weapon site is it's, it's actually, it's the go-to, you know, that's what you're going to kill with for sure. That's the end product. 100%. Yep. I, I usually tell guys that too. The thermal weapon site is where it's at yep. because once you get that, you will yeah. more than yeah. likely hundred yep. percent take the step up to yep. some kind of a scanner. Yep. But I'm not saying that you can't do it the other way. It's just. If you're going to get into thermal, man, and you're going to drop three grand, why not drop another couple? Can't put a price on fun, man. Exactly. <laughs> All, right. All right. Helmet setups. Here's what's going to happen with that. We're not going to touch base on that. Um, we are not going to. I, I'm going to do a complete full-fledged YouTube video because that has been a smoking hot topic this year for me. I have set up numerous helmets for guys based on just kind of how we configured it and and uh, modded ours up we've got some pretty cool options on ours from the the ir lights to the to the stream light mounted on the pick rail to you know we've got some agilite adapters where you can basically customize and make your helmet a lot more efficient regarding the battery pack and the uh uh we're running an external audio recording and we'll get into that but yeah. it, we'll, we'll show you i, I want to go into detail on the helmets guys but not over a podcast i want it to be visual yep we're going to do a visual here so we're going to scratch that off you guys can just wait for that thoughts on envision i'm assuming envision is the envision thermal manufacturer not night vision okay if it is night vision we've kind of touched base on that we do utilize night vision there is an application for it you can read with it you can see with it you can navigate with it uh, you can do the same thing with, not the same thing with thermal, but you, you get the idea. For us, man, thermal is just so, you go back in our other podcast, we, we freaking go into massive detail on it. So regarding what I'm thinking the fella asked, thoughts on Envision, the manufacturer, good. They're good. It's essentially the same thing as Trijicon in uh, a polymer housing, right? Instead of a machined alloy, it's a polymer housing. Display, the core, the, the resolution, basically all of that stuff is really, really almost the same as Chizikon. Really high-end uh, manufacturer, I think. We, you ran the Halo. Oh, I yeah. ran the Halo. Yep. The LR, the Halo LR. Yep. Um, I, I want to run the Knox. I, I, I thought that the Knox had onboard recording, but it doesn't, which is kind of a massive deterrent, which is one of the main reasons I wanted to use it. Um, but regardless, it's I've heard some really good things about it. You, you really... Once they have the 12 core and the 640 resolution, you're you're in uh you're you're on a level of itself. You're you're in a separate group. It's it's really good, high quality stuff. Um, it, you can't go wrong with them. Period. And we can get them too. And going into the next one, are we affiliated with IRA? We're not affiliated with anyone. I mean, well, we are. Fuck, I can't say that. Well, if we are affiliated, meaning we murder shit with IRAs. Yeah, we're we're in. <laughs> that's how he's that's good dude that's that oh, if, if that's not a are we paid by ira if, no <laughs> if that's the best commercial you could have versus somebody giving you 20 grand to put it on tv if that's how you do it right there but we're not we're o'neill ops is a dealer for ira uh yeah. tyler is a good dude he sent me up i appreciate it and we can get a lot of shit through them uh if i were buying a thermal tomorrow it'd be an ira the pro, and we'll get into that. There's a yeah. couple questions on it. They're yeah. good, dude. They're they're. We'll get into it. Um, but regarding the affiliation, it, it, we're not sponsored by them. We you, we've used them. You guys can see the video. You can see the performance. It is what it is. Uh, it's just something that that is out there now, and you guys can see the quality of visual for for yourself. And there is some stuff down at the bottom of this that we're going to get into here in probably the next half an hour that uh guys have had issues and we're all i'll all, all run you through them i mean i i'm not gonna say that i know everything about some of the issues but I'll, I'll try to try to help a guy out as much as i can regarding what i do know about them uh what do we got for the next one there 
easiest way to judge the distance without the LRF. What do you think on that, dude? Honestly, I asked John because <laughs> John's got the LRF. Oh, that's <laughs> that's how I do it, and I ain't even shit a little bit. That's how that's you do it. Good, dude, ask John. That's so good. That is freaking. That's honesty right there. The thing about it is, where we're getting stuff as close as we can. Judging a distance or, or missing the judgment for, say, and I'm saying 200 yards and in, when they get that close, I mean, if you're off a tiny bit, it's not, you're not missing. Yep. You know, um, so that's not such a big issue for, for say, for us. But if you're going to 300, you know, and you're thinking he's two, you're probably going to. Exactly. You know, so I don't, I don't know. I mean, other than asking John, I, I'm, and more of it with one, I'm assuming probably more so when I asked her, I'm like, dude, it's a, it's a curious question. It's like, Hey dude, yeah, I just yeah, want to know what yeah. it is. Cause you I'm, have a number in your head. Yeah. I know we could yeah, kill it. Yeah. And you know, I mean, you have a number in your head and then John will throw a number at you and you're like, well, I mean, I could have been off or nailed that one. You know, it's, it's, it's tough. You know, you do it enough and you kind of get to where you think you're good at it or you can kind of get close, but. It, that's good though. That and what I usually kind of, what I usually kind of tell guys is, the easiest way is right how you said it with an LRF man. What's with the with the yep. and John's running the Pulsar XP50 LRF and there's going to be some options out there and we're going to talk about them here, in in some of this stuff down at the bottom. But uh, Keith's right. I mean that is the easiest way to judge if you have an LRF. But I don't think this guy had an LRF when, when I used to have my uh, my HDB 3000s, my Leicas. Those yeah, things you would do that a lot, and and you couldn't see, but you could you could look, and yep. you knew you could visual. All right, the next thing that you were going to hit after that kite was probably two thousand yards, You're so right. you knew, yeah, yeah, you, you had an idea. But if you sometimes have, if you like, we hunt the same area a lot. You kind of have an idea where stuff is from the day daytime, you know, and you can kind of go by that as far as well. We were sitting here, you know, or I know where I'm at here, and the fence lines about there, you know. You can kind of use that for a reference. Exactly. As as your night stuff. That's exactly what I was going to say. The yep. next guys, yep. what, what, what I usually tell guys is if you have a good unit, usually like you get you like a, a Trizicon, an Envision, the IRA with a 12, Core 640, those that give you that optical edge, that optical clarity, like you're down on a pivot, you know, and you can see one tower and the next tower and the next tower perfectly clear. Like you said, a fence line where you can see those posts and you can count those posts. And, and that we do hunt in a lot of the same areas uh, over and over. I mean, we'll hit spots up over, and that's a whole yeah. other podcast yep. in itself. A whole other podcast in itself. How many times do we smoke areas out, dude? Yeah. A lot. Yep. A lot. And how often are you successful? A lot. Yep. But um, having a really good unit with the some of the best clarity is 100% going to give you a better visual to try to establish a range right versus something that doesn't easiest an lrf i know guys don't have the option the next option is a crystal clear unit you get versed you get well versed you get educated you you learn all right that coyote is easily within range and right. when we're consistently killing coyotes at night at 100 yards it's 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 just built into your system you know sure. you automatically know and that's what we try to do we don't we don't try to you know, we just don't try to exceed the visual sucks. I mean, you can see that, that I ray video we did where Keith recorded that coyote at the very intro at five yards away versus some of those shots that are 200 yards away. What, what's more interesting? Where can you see the yeah. distinct features? Yeah. We're yeah, when you can see the heat dot on the tip of the nose, you can see it. Blunt. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, Every you, coyote's got a tip of their nose has got a heat dot on, on, on that one bait pile. It coops. Yeah. If you watch, you can see the ground heat up where that one sniffs it. And where the one that you recorded at five yards away, I think I put it, it might be on the kill box. I might have put it on the kill box. If, if, I, if I did, you'll, I, I'm gun you. Yeah. He, when he sniffs the ground, the, the thermal, it heats up. That's how good you can see it. Really? Unreal, yeah. dude. I was yeah. paying attention to that. So that's when, you, when they're, yeah. when they're yeah. blinking and you can see it, <laughs> yep. that's interesting to us. That's what we want to see. Yeah. yeah. When you can see that they have mange, you know. Yeah. With a thermal, you're you're the you're, distinct line yep. where there's no hair, where there is hair, yep. the splits between their hair, all sorts. That's that's what we're after. Um, 
so that's that's pretty i think that's pretty elaborate on on the best way to tell yeah, how far can you see with it <laughs> i'm i can see you can see forever dude Yeah, you can see as far you can as you see want. as far as you want. Hey, are you are you who are you respond? The IR beam. <laughs> How many times have we done that this year with the with the fourteen and the in the LRF the Pulsar XP fifty LRF? Hey, keep ranging that. We want to see that dot hit him in the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Logan's talking Logan about. Was, oh. yeah. We use <laughs> yeah. the PVS fourteen a lot, and John will peg a range with that L XP fifty LRF, and you can hundred percent see that beam, and it's an IR beam. You can't see it with your eye, but with that with that night vision, you yeah. can see it. Well, that well, the first time we seen it, I was like, "What the hell is turning green out there? <laughs> what? The, there's a green light out there. <laughs> Don't shoot that way, dude. <laughs> when you know there's nothing yeah, out there, yeah. nothing. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. John was hitting it with the LRF, and I didn't even know it. Uh, so how far can you see with it, man? You can see as far as your eye can yeah, see. Yeah, as far as you want, man. As far as your eye can see, if the conditions are right, if it's not super humid, you you can see forever. Hey, this is a pretty good one. Um, uh, a games keeper in Scotland, he was one I wrote down in particular, yeah. asked uh, how good the Ricos are. All right, I'm, I, I don't really like to sugarcoat anything because I'm not going to lie. At, at the very beginning, I was skeptical because when we got them, they're like, hey, dude, we don't know how well these are going to run in the cold. And, and ours were like before anything was even put out nothing so was like, put out we we don't have audio record and we're yeah. going to go into that we'll go into that right but I, i'm i we need to have shit that works <laughs> the, the, yeah the first thing you said to me is well you didn't know how good they worked at night or in the cold the cold like, fuck, fuck. <laughs> that's like the main come thing on dude, the, dude fuck, tyler, tyler we in texas bro <laughs> <laughs> that's exact we discussed that and i just shook my head i was like oh we're fucked <laughs> <laughs> guinea pigs dude don't use us as yeah you use, down there fuck. use chris no <laughs> shit we need to he's doing it for a show we're doing it for a living dude yeah. we need to i mean come on so but the way i see the way i look at it as far as looking at through other thermals in the past years it's almost like going from regular tv to high definition tv if you think about it that's that's one way i kind of think of it it it's it is when you look yeah. in that that last video that i put up watch it guys it's yep. it's all in a, watch it in hd yep. and that's i would say pro did you watch it good oh yeah it's i would say that the visual that you get in the optic is better than what you're actually seeing on the screen right. exactly but it's that, that that what it puts out is pretty damn good on the yeah. screen yeah it's not it's definitely doing it justice compared to the shit show that we had to do with trijicons right that was that was tough so they're good, dude. I mean, they're good, and and we'll get into we'll get into some of the stuff how we ran them uh, this year and, and kind of what we ran into. I, I kind of had the feeling that that's why there's so many people were interested in thermals, maybe because I post, posted that video up, and a lot of guys were interested in that in that Rico, even though it's not generating a lot of views. It's only got like fifteen thousand views or something. I was kind of hoping that would freight train and take off, but yeah, I don't have the algorithm down, dude. Uh, kind of goes into the budget question to get advantage advantages of a six thousand dollar versus a three thousand internals. I I kind of really break it down to guys that are genuinely interested in purchasing one. You're you're looking at the core. You're you're looking at a seventeen versus a twelve or a six forty resolution versus a three twenty or three eighty four. You're you're looking at uh what where it's manufactured, what it's manufactured out of. A lot of different things. I would say the primary difference in a 6K versus a 3K is what you're getting internally, the resolution and that that core, that that 12 versus the 17. And the coveted Trijicon internals is now starting to go into a lot of other units. And that's why, um, I mean, there's a huge market out there for guys that, that, that want, that are right in that mid-range. And I would call mid-range 6,000. Five six thousand. Yeah. There's a big market for guys in that in that price range who just can't drop the extra few thousand to get a Trijicon. Right, and that's where we, Tyler. A lot of us. I've been in contact with a fellow at Trijicon, and I'm like, dude, I don't. I know we don't have any kind of skin in the game compared to a lot of guys that do this shit or that design that or build it. But listen to some of the hunters. Listen to what we want. We want a battery pack so we're not burning through CR-123s in the middle of the night, having a fucking pack of coyotes coming in, and the fucker goes down. Yeah. 
done yeah. done it, been several there several times. And then you're taking warm CRs out of your pocket, put and still killing. Yeah. We worked with Tyler, battery adapter kit. We're retrofitting a nine thousand dollar optic with a four hundred dollar battery adapter yeah, kit. Yeah, he was sending cases of batteries to us. Just to make it work for yeah. us in the night. And then we figured out and then we tell guys, guys from North Dakota are calling us, hey dude, how do you make this thing work when it's cold? I'll, I'll set you up. This is how we do it. You plug this bitch in and you go yep. and you don't stop. Yep. Don't shut it off. Just go. It takes stuff like that to figure it out. And Trizicon, can't, can't, they're awesome. But why doesn't somebody in the engineering fucking not think that they're so damn smart and <laughs> talk to guys that use the shit yep. and put an onboard recording? All, we're, all we'd want is onboard recording and a, ex, and a battery source, something that has a rechargeable battery source that you can take on and off without having to throw away CR-123s. Yep. Instead of having to go out and buy an aftermarket kit to, to retrofit it, bungee cord, shock cord it to your, to your stock so shit's hanging up and just yeah. extra work that you shouldn't have to do. But there's stuff coming out. That's where, that's where the IRA falls in, man. I mean, And what's the, what, what's the IRA come in at? The, the Mark I is at six. Yeah, see? Look, I mean, that's it. Right there. Yeah, the guy that the guy that wants something at for five grand, fuck another thousand bucks. And he's at Trizicon level a quality. Check, put that bitch <laughs> in your sock good, drawer, dude. Exactly, do that. That's <laughs> you, what you, you got to do. It's like, gosh dang it, how bad do you want it, man? Yeah. So that's where the that's where that, and and I'm not gonna say that I'm not gonna like I said I'm not gonna say one is better than the other because I've dr off this off this table the Mark Three. It, I've set a gun up and it tipped over, boom, right on the scope, took it out, zeroed it, never shifted at all. I'm not going to deny the build quality of Trizicon or any of the high-end manufacturers. I'm not. But some of these companies that are coming in and having them made overseas, to be honest, and cutting the costs in ways that are going to be very, very uh, appealing to a lot of customers are going to, they're going to kind of take over on it, I think. I mean, like like the Ricos, you got a battery pack, dude. We never yeah. had to ever take an extra battery with us this year. In no, any condition no. that we went in, we ran one battery. And left it on. Left it on. It's got a sleep mode, which. Put it to sleep. I don't think you would even need it to. We didn't. We, well, you know? we, we did, but we should have not did it just right, to see. just to see. And yeah, that, I mean, it's got some game changers for, for what we do, how when, we do it. When we got them, like, dude, this is going to be insane. But when the first, only kicker was if it was going to operate in the cold. That's yeah, my, I'm yep. like, Tah. and we, and we never had any issues. None. As far as cold or anything. We never had one hiccup with no. the two that we, in with one, I could go, all right, you might be flipping a coin and you might be calling heads and landing on heads. But when you have two units yeah. and you don't have one issue with both of them, more than likely something's going pretty good, but we've had guys we're going to go over, right? We're going right. to talk about it here. So the advantages, man, of a six K or a, a yeah, 6,000 unit versus a 3,000, you get the idea. You get what you pay for in this game. And it's just like we were talking earlier, man. Do you, would you rather have a Ferrari or a Taurus? Would you rather have a Raptor or, or a 1980s F-150? It, it doesn't matter. But one of them is going to get you there a hell of a lot faster. Yep. And if you know how to use it, it's going to get you there even faster. Even, you know. I tell guys there's been times, I mean, it, it, you, you get the idea. You, you kind of uh, maybe comparing apples to oranges, but you get the idea of what I'm saying. It's the same type of principle, man. If you spend the money and you know how to hunt and you know how to use equipment like that, it's a force multiplier. Yep. It's a fuck, it's, it'll fucking Double your numbers. Answer that question on Instagram real quick. That's which a good one? Where, which one is it? The humidity. Nathan Mueller. That's a good one. How how your opinion on the trail to XP50 LF and how you? What, the the humidity. The humidity question is. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, we did. I never wrote anything down with that. Did I? I know that's why he just he just asked that. That's what I'm saying. The humidity. That's a good one. Okay. Okay. Good, dude. You know, humidity is is a really big key as far as. What year was it that we didn't... Clarity, contrast. What year was it where we were screwed, dude? Where we didn't get nothing for Tyler? That Like, I mean, we got a couple... We got a few doubles. Dude, it was Be last year. What, it was it last year? Yeah. Just junk shit. We yeah. would go out and it was, and you know, guys, we're throwing some words out there that probably I don't want to beep out and I probably should settle down on the cussing, but... Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> last year, last year we went out and 90% of the nights, it was... 90 95 humidity 
And we're we're looking, you know, we're always watching that humidity. And if we're in the in the sixties, low seventies, usually that's pretty good because of the how cold it gets. The colder it is, the humidity isn't as big of a factor. Where if it's in the high eighties or what have you and it's sub zero or or they're close to it, humidity really doesn't make become a big issue. Where it's warmer out. I mean, we want we want that humidity to be in that sixty range, sixty five, you know, seventy or below, just because we're recording. Well, if we if we weren't recording, it, I, it wouldn't matter. I don't think it wouldn't matter. No, you 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 can see in in higher humidity the way that I kind of tell guys is there's inert objects out there. There's a, there's objects that soak up radiation. Yep, and Trees, then they it, yep, time. and then they'll emit radiation, but it's not a heat. It's it's a heat signature, but it's not alive. It's not right. it's it's nothing that's alive. Yep. yep. So you have fence posts, you have trees, you have rocks. You you wait till you know the longer that you wait and everything cools down, the better yep. visual yep. you're usually going to have. Yep. But even different crops, as far as pasture, exactly, alpha, do the same thing. It you always sense. see a haze over, like you you Alfalfa. noticed, you're the one yeah. that noticed that. Yeah. But when you have that humidity, a lot of those inert objects, it's it's like a, it's just a washed out image. Yep. Now, the, the animal that you may be pursuing, your target, it doesn't really affect how right. clear he is right. and how well he emits that heat. But for a video application, it's almost like a foggy night. That's what it is. Looking with your naked eye, Yep. you know. You, but it hammers through the fog. And that's what we noticed this year, these eye rays. So much better through the humidity. Uh, it's it's made the nights that are literally 90, 90% humidity easily doable. It's out snowing, and we're out thermaling still. You know, it's like if, if there was snow in the forecast in the past, we wouldn't even plan on going. No, and we smoked them this year. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I think if a guy wants to really break it down, I'm not an engineer and I don't know enough about it, but if you just think about it logically, I, I'm sure it's the processors, man. I don't, yeah. there's, it's not the display, but the, the Ricos, the iRays have that matrix three, 12, um, Envision and, 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 uh, Chizikon have the BAE. And I know that we've ran those and they're good, but in humid conditions, all oh, the iRays we're noticing. And yeah. Big time. That's just something that we figure that we notice. Yep. You and, and that's one of the things we noticed that early as far as this year is right off the right bat. Right off the bat, you you said with the MH twenty fives, right? With the little with our helmet mounted setups. Yeah, the, I mean, you're like, seriously. dude, what's the humidity supposed to be tonight? Yeah, we better not go. Well, we go cruise. What the hell? You look outside and it's like it's doesn't even. It's not even a factor. You know, it's like we notice that right away. So for for video for any kind of video recording purposes. Yeah. That's a huge, yeah. a huge asset yep. for us to be able to, to, to be able to go, all right, it's going to be 90, it's going to be 80%, 85% humidity. We're still going to go versus, you know what? It's going to be junk footage. So we're just going to stay home. So that was a good one, dude. I'm glad you picked that up. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, man, we're at four. Well, we can do this. We're, we're two thirds of the way through a fella. I don't know his name, but he has an IRA. He got an IRA, and, and I don't want to make this whole podcast about IRAs, but I don't give a shit. This is about you guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if that's what you want to hear. Yeah, ooh. exactly. Uh, but There's a reason we're running them. Yeah, exactly. Well, now there is, after they fucking worked in the cold. <laughs> so Tyler he, didn't get them back the two weeks later. <laughs> we need to hear, well, I'll explain to the guy. So he he's ha had some IRA issues, low-level low, low level audio recording, and that's that's a given. The Mark 1s, the new Mark 1s have... have a, a, a less coveted audio recording system, internal audio recording. Uh, so basically, if you want to get better, a lot better quality recording, you upgrade to the Alpha. All right, the Alpha upgrade will get that to you. I can go through the differences between the Rico Mark One and the Alpha. You you get you know an extra battery with the Alpha. Uh, a lot of guys are like, it's not worth a thousand extra bucks. If you add it up, man, it might be. It's pretty damn close. An extra battery, those batteries aren't cheap. Those those, those LI bat, those are fucking 180 bucks. You don't have to worry about any downtime. Exactly. And that, Maybe you forgot to shut it off and it went stayed up all night long. You know, it's, it's, you got We've an extra. Done that. One. Yep. So the, the Alpha comes with an extra battery. It comes with an ADM RQD, uh, a, 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 basically a rapid quick detach uh, mount. We run all those. ADM QD throw levers on Harris and our 
uh, Atlas bipods. It's that's something that's a necessity for us. So it comes with that option. And we highly recommend running that if you got an AR platform, which we'll get into guys are asking about the ARs. And it also comes with an upgraded, an upgraded uh, focus knob. Which, All right, which is a throw lever for you. You could you you think that that's going to be a game changer I for do, you, one hundred percent. And I'm not going to disagree with you. Some guys are like, ah, shit, I don't. Until you use it, yeah, I yeah. could see you thinking yep. and knowing yep. automatically. Yep. Um, and then it's got a, a ruggedized coyote tan housing with upgraded uh, buttons. And you think that would be badass? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm after. The tan, dude, the tan. And then it also comes with, uh, like I said, a, a better audio recording, and there's another there's there's something else too but you know if you couple all that together you're you're probably getting close to an extra thousand bucks now it doesn't change the fact that it records anything any any better other than audio all right and the looks of it and And having another battery and a better mount so you can swap it from a bolt gun to an ar um, whatever yep so those are some of the differences now the, the fellas seeing a delay in audio um versus the image that he gets and I'll tell you what, dude, get used to it. Because what I'm recording on right here, my, my podcaster, I have to go in when I, when I do a, when I go into, into post-production and I dump all of this audio and then I dump the footage from my XF705 and from that Sony 4K Handycam, all of this audio on this road is a fraction of a second slower than what my cameras pick up. So when I sync it, when we sync it, I might be on right there. I can sync that point, but everything before that, probably 10 minutes and everything after that, every five, couple five minutes, it starts getting off. It's the same thing with this. Yep. I mean, unless you're really concerned with video production, dude, fucking don't worry about it. Yep. But how we're getting audio <laughs> to fill, fill them in on how we're getting, you, you, you can fill them in on how the hell we're getting audio with it. I was reading Instagram. <laughs> I was just gonna. I was just gonna go to, but I'll. I'll. I'll tell. I was. I didn't. Even, I didn't even hear a word. You Dude, said. that alpha brain's supposed to let work. One side's going hot, and the other side's going hot. Uh, yeah, but I had these headphones on, and you weren't talking in your mic, dude. <laughs> oh shit! So, how do we do audio? So here's the first kicker, man. Oh, like Keith said, the 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 Mark ones that we got were essentially still prototype status okay they were they were they were literally prototype status they they basically had everything but a couple things and one of the things that they didn't have was any kind of available audio recording there was no available audio recording and for us and what we do that sucks ass bad terrible i mean what do you do it took me probably i burned my eyes up on that last uh uh 30 30 kills from ira because i I should almost get my, my helmet. We have some H6 field mics and they're, they're little, they're little audio recorders about, you know, probably an inch and a half by two inches, a little bit bigger, three quarters, an inch deep, put an SD mini card in it. And, and depending on how big your mini is, you just turn them on, leave them on. We run uh, anchor power core with two USB plugs. So we're always have, always have power to that. And we just turn it on, leave it on. And then it powers up our thermal also. And then, um, and then you push the record button and you hope that you're going to kill something when you push the record button some with, within the next couple minutes because shit starts running and we end up, I, I went through about 10 or 15 clips and we've got 20 or 30 minute clips of just audio that I didn't, I had to sort through it, dude. So don't that's how we rec- that's how we're getting video dude we we have it on our helmet we get set up when we start calling or when we get to a bait pile we push the record and i have to go in post production uh, first of all i have to pull the sd card out dump the footage off of my helmet off the audio and then i have to dump the footage off of the rico and then usually if i'm smart and not stupid i'll put both of those audio and video clip in the same folder so that i can sync them up later well guess what we start getting hot and heavy. Shit starts going down. We start getting into kill mode. Stuff starts dying. And we start recording shit left and right and forgetting to record shit left and right. And by the time the night's done, I'm tired and I don't even pull the footage. So it goes to the next night and we do the same thing again and I don't pull footage. 
And that's how it turns. We got footage of audio, footage of video. And I was spending hours on that last video pulling footage from yeah. shit that I didn't know where it came from. You dude. were cussing at me like, <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. So stupid. Don't stupid. I mean that? That's a, that dude. That is a that is a a minor issue to have with yours unless you're really concerned. Traffic it and get the upgraded alpha. But regarding the lag, it's probably going to happen. I mean, it, like I said, it happens with this, and this is an expensive unit. It happens with my cameras. Sometimes in post, you just got to fix it. I, and I either cut the audio and pull it back a little bit, or I can go in and I can speed it up, or I actually don't speed the audio up. I slow the audio down like a, if, from, from 100% to like 98.7%. Extends that audio, and I'm good. So there's a way around it if you're trying to video produce. But anyway, uh, that's getting into detail. That's kind of a little bit more elaborate. This I wrote this guy's name down. Because he had some good questions, man. Uh, and not that anybody else doesn't, but his name is HFF Outdoor. Or that's his username. And he was asking about the Rico and models we have ran and how we differentiate sets day versus night. And then he also asked with another guy, this was his question first, ARs and why we primarily use bolt guns with thermal. I like those questions. <clears throat> I'll probably go into detail on the bolt action and ARs on a separate podcast. To tell you the truth, we can we can mildly touch, we can quick touch base yeah, on it in a yeah, minute here. Yep. Yeah. But but let's talk about the the Rico and the models we ran. We'll probably miss some. I should have wrote them down, dude. I've ran ATN, FLIR, Trijicon, Pulsar, Envision, uh, EOTech. Knights, L3, uh, Photonis, and, and, and granted, some of those latter ones are night vision, not not thermal manufacturers. Sure. Yep. Oasis, the Skeeter, and the UTCX2. That's a, that's basically yep. a branch of Trijicon yep. now because they bought them. Very high end units, uh, and multiple manu multiple models underneath all of those manufacturers. Okay, we could name. Th there's certain models that we opt out. Like Tyler will be like, "Hey, dude, you know what's your thoughts on running a Thermion? I, I don't I don't want to run a Thermion." They've got two batteries. That's extra shit for us to worry about. I want one set up. I, I don't have any interest in having a, uh, a thermal unit, not just because it looks like a day optic. I can see the aesthetics of it in, in, in you know, running regular scope rings. But, man, a thermal is a thermal. It's an animal in itself. I like how they're set up, how you can attach a, a larger battery pack, um, Maybe that's just a personal preference. There's some other thoughts on it too. Having be able to have, have that type of quick detach mount if you need it. Uh, I don't know, but all of the models, man, um, that we've ran, we could go into detail on them. ATN. A lot of guys have seen some videos on that. We've refrained from working with them because of some issues. But dude, here's the thing: we ran their stuff when they had a $10,000 scope, all right? And I saw a question on here. Hey, man, what's your, what's your, uh, what's your, your, your take on the ATN Thors? The old ones, when they were 10,000 bucks, those were some of the best units that I they had. I think that's the first video we, you'd done was. And it's got a probably, I don't even know, <clears throat> 10 million views that Tyler did. Yeah. So, Here's what happened with that, and, and it's a facts, all right? It, it can hurt your feelings if you want it to, but when they started adding all of the options that they did into a scope, 10 times the amount of options and features, and they took a $10,000 top-tier unit that we used to use and dropped the price point down to less than half of that, probably two thirds, less than two thirds yeah. from whatever they are. I don't even know less than half of what their original Thor was. You have to sit back so and what the fucking hell? throw a flag up yeah. and go, all right, man, does this shit make sense? Yeah. All right. If, if we have a rifle back here that one year we get, all right. And the, and we, and we pick out a carbon fiber barrel, a titanium action, a carbon shell stock. And I don't even know where I'm going with this. And we take it to Chad and he builds that bitch up and he charges us $7,000. And we're like, good, you know? Yeah. And then another year later, it's three years later, all of a sudden, he. We he want the same rifle, but put a scope on it. <laughs> <laughs> he, say he, see, he builds a rifle. He 
he packages it up and gives it to us. And he's like, Hey dude, I need, I need a couple thousand bucks for that. Yeah. You know, it ain't a $7,000 rig anymore. Yeah. I'm going to be afraid to open that shit up and look at it because <laughs> if he's, if he's charging us 2000 bucks for the same exact shit, there's something wrong yep. period. So that's just the truth, man. You got to figure that out for yourself. There's that's, that's, and like I said, I don't like to badmouth companies, but there's a certain point where you just, you, you figure it out for yourself and you're like, it's not worth it. Let's get yeah. something good. Let's go back to saving a few thousand more bucks and get something that's good. The same principle applies to everything, man. Guns, uh, the equipment, you, you get the idea. Um, I don't know if we really want to go into differentiate day sets versus night sets. Hey, hey. Who is that guy? A complete shit show. <laughs> I'm watching it. He's laughing. There, at there we go. That's why battery life is a complete shit on the Thermion. He's laughing I, at your ass. That's why you, you said that. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. what did I say? Oh, gotcha. You okay, okay. Show. Okay, I gotcha. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Just shut the fuck okay. up and do your stuff. <laughs> so the the uh you know, I, I don't know if we want to touch base on differentiate they differentiate the day sets versus the night sets because that could be a whole podcast in itself. That how is elaborate. actually a good idea for a podcast. Okay, but. okay, we'll get rid of that then. All right, sorry, dude. That's an awesome question. We'll remember that. But buddy. yeah, there's there. I mean, there's differences, big yeah, time, big yeah. time, big time. We'll, we'll we'll do a whole podcast on that shit for you. And then the same fella, and then another guy that that's a cool dude. They do a lot of film work on YouTube. Coyote Control Specialist. This guy goes, hey man. uh, ARs and why we primarily use bolt guns with thermal. Real quick, just a small, small one, all right? There's three of us. We all run precision bolt guns. I'm not doing a follow-up. There you go. There's that's your answer, the, dude. Yeah. There you go, then. That's the trigger puller <laughs> right there. If I was there. down in Texas shooting pigs, damn right, I'd, yeah. I'd, have, there mags, you go, dude. I'd have mags stacked in my pocket. Fucking chest rings, dude. <laughs> yeah. Fucking boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Um. Very, very seldom three guns, you know, under 100 yards. I don't need a follow-up shot, per se. Exactly. And if there's only one follow-up shot because John missed. <laughs> I can throw him under the bus. I can run a bolt. I can run a, you know, that's yeah, that's yeah. the main reason. That's good, dude. There you go. There, That's your answer right there. Um, And and for anything more detailed, which I'll go into, we'll do a whole podcast on that. We yeah. will do a whole we podcast. we used to run bolts. ARs. Our ARs. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. I mean, there's things from. And there's little things that are, you think you're stupider in hell, but. <laughs> It, exactly. It makes a difference. Exactly. And we will do, we'll just write that down. I'll circle that. That'll be a whole podcast yeah. in itself. Yeah. That'll be good, dude. Um, the most reliable and clearest with no price point. If this guy don't have a price point, what's the most reliable and the clearest units, dude, you're looking at some expensive shit. I would say the Oasis stuff, that little Skeeter that we ran was stupid. I didn't like the discreteness of it. It's probably like the MH 25s. I mean, I, I could, a little bit smaller even. Yeah. I didn't like the features. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't like the features of the how to nuke it, uh, how to access a menu. It was a lot more complicated than an MH25. And, and to be honest, a lot more complicated to cycle through stuff than the than the uh, the Trijicon patrols. And probably because I, I had a whole year to get used to that Skeeter, a whole yeah. year. And it was good, dude. But I'll tell you what, if you took the MH25... It's a $4,500 unit, and you took the Skeeter, it's a $16,000 unit, and you even took the Patrol M300, and you put them all together. Which is what you ran the year before. For a couple years. Yep. Uh, and you put them all together, and you, and you and you bubble wrapped them and shit. Nobody knew. You couldn't see what the aesthetics was. You could just look at the display. Yep. If you didn't know the, what this, the different displays, the OLED versus you know the, the yep. what the iRay has, or the MH25 you wouldn't know which one was better. Right. You wouldn't know better visual. That's how much difference is. Now, not saying that with that price point and that optical clarity doesn't come a better build, you know, a, a, a better status, a better a better product, period. Because I guarantee you that Skeeter is going to, you're going to be able to throw that shit at something and it's going to still work. Whereas the other, you know, even the Trijicon, I we beat them MH25s up pretty damn hard. But I mean... You you got to when you pay for something like that, man. Usually, you get what you pay for. So, the most reliable and cleanest units, man. You're looking at. I, I would say, I don't even want to get myself into it. I mean, the UTCX two. If I could, if I could run that, I would. 
if that would that would honestly that would be my go-to dude that utcx2 you could just wreck stuff forever with that you there would be nothing out there that could almost get away if, if you consistently shot during the day like like we do during the day on steel i mean you're going we're, we're shooting you're, you're taking your prc your 6.5 out to 1200 yards which now granted in south dakota we're not going to do that with thermal because we're limited to caliber and we're right. limited to 224 but dude you you build a 220 a, a you build a 22 creed and you run 80.5 green vert burgers going mid three th- lower 3000s yeah. high bc hammer 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 at a thousand easily hammer at a thousand run your dope during the day get a good day optic put that utcx2 on it and and you cancel everything out from fucking zero to a thousand all right as long as you can hold your own i might you guys are like oh fuck dude you're acting like you're tough you could <laughs> do that with that unit yeah. That's the force multiplier. If you have the skill set and you know it's anybody can do it. Yep. I we get guys that run that big bitch up there, that gun that ain't never shot further than 400 yards and we get them pounding elk at 700 yeah. yards, we range, we dope it, they pull a the trigger, dead elk. It's not hard to do. Right. You get a piece of equipment. That's what I I mean, most are li- but most reliable and clear. I don't never ran long enough, but I'm assuming with that price point it's going to be reliable as hell. But uh that would that would be mine dude personally if i could do it uh no price point that's it dude that's <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be fucking a tough one to beat yeah i i would do it i would probably honestly to tell you the truth i would i would be stupid enough to do it <laughs> if we could get a recording device to do it because when i looked through tyler's and did you look through it yeah. close, you magnified that his rifle his day optic up to 10x and you could still Yep. It, it started pixelizing, but nothing like you couldn't use. Right. Unreal. Unreal. So next one. Yeah. Okay. The micron size versus magnification versus sensor versus resolution. All right, guys. That, that's a good question, but go back to that Ultimate Night Vision podcast. Yeah, Rich and Tyler both went over that big time. And we touched base. There's so much information there regarding details, fellas. I mean... uh I could help a guy out real quick on, you know, you're, you're usually it's, it's like a day optic. The more magnification, the less field of view. Okay. The more you magnify something, you're going to lose that field of view. Um, and then your, your, your micron, your sense, your, your, your resolution, all of that. We kind of touched base on that, but instead of going into massive detail on that, look back at our podcast, man, there, there's there, you, you will get so much more on that. I, I think, there, there was something maybe that I could kind of say real quick um, that I explained to guys. So there's so much, not misinformation, but so much, uh, uh, what's the word? You, you, confusion about certain, like, so, so Pulsar does it terrible, I think. When I was first doing this, Tyler, I had to study that shit. You got the XP, the XQ, the XM, the, the XG. I mean, come on, fucking <laughs> the Lexion, the Helion. The uh, you, yeah. dude, holy shit! You're a one manufacturer, <laughs> and you have all of this stuff. Come make this. Let's just do some simple shit. Yeah. Well, these guys. So anyway, it's it's not bad stuff. But you, t- a lot of guys are like, what's the difference between the XG the, or the XP50 and the XQ50 LRF? So the the trails. All right. What's what's the difference between the two? Well, one's a 384 resolution or a 320, 384, and the other one's a 640. And like, well, what's that mean? It's the resolution. That's how many pixels are across the screen. The 640 is going to have twice as many, essentially. You get what I'm saying. You're going to have a better image quality. The easiest way that I explain it's like, so what's going to be better for me? The way, I, the way I explain it is like, right, dude, take a balloon or take a piece of rubber. I might have said this on another podcast. And cut a nice little chunk of rubber out. Yay big. Draw a sketch on it. Nice little sketch. Now take all four corners and stretch that bitch out. Twice as big. All right, that picture is going to change. It's not going to be as distinct. It's not going to be as clear. It's going to be bigger, but you're going to lose that image quality. That's essentially what they're doing in in their in their uh, the XP versus the XQ. If you if you think about it, and you're paying more for the the higher resolution, but you should. I mean, you're getting better image quality. Now, there's a lot more stuff, man, that I can go into that, but but I think we cover most of that with Ultimate Night Vision. Uh How to kill coyotes with thermals. How to kill coyotes with thermals. <clears throat> Primarily, this is why I wrote this down, because he's focused on cattle. I he, he I don't really sure if I got his, his question 100%, but he said, with the focus on cattle. 
um, focused on protecting cattle. Man, uh, what do you call it? Uh, camper? Not a camper. What the hell do those guys call that? In those movie, in those, in that freaking, in those computer video games, those kids that play games when you fucking just a sit gamer? there. No, 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 no. <laughs> you just sit there and hide out, dude. <laughs> what do they call it? It's not a camper. I'm missing it, man. You know what I'm saying, though? What is it? Yeah. You know what I'm, you know yeah. what it is? Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> you do, but you don't. <laughs> uh, come on, dude. Uh, it's a, it's a, yeah, dude. I think it's a camper. <laughs> Fuck, I think that's, you, you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, you jackass. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Dude, I broke a sweat right there. You made me break a sweat on that one. Oh, shit. Uh, the, but no. You, <laughs> You're you, fucked up, are you? <laughs> probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My stomach's going to cramp up because I was laughing. Uh, you camp out, dude. It's an ambush setting. That's what you do. That's one of the massive, that's one of the main ways that you can kill coyotes and cattle is if you can pull an all nighter dude and you can just set up that one year, we did it right out there, right out, right out right north. north. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, when we, we, how long were we sitting out there for a few hours? <laughs> yeah. Just laying there in the trees. Yeah. We had a calf start getting ate up one yep. night. I don't know if I think as he got stepped on or I yeah. don't know. And we, we, we left him, we never touched him and they were eating on him. And we set yeah, up in he, those they, trees. They hit him the night before just a little bit, kind of drug him a little bit. And we seriously laid there in those trees. Just camped out, dude. Yeah. Camper. Go, <laughs> <laughs> go, go, go for it. I don't it. think I know. that's what it's called. I dude. don't either. What's it called? <laughs> Camper. What's? I don't know, dude. Little pussy. Well, good. <laughs> I'll think of it in a second. I'll think of what those guys call it, dude. Because they called us that. They called sleep. No, not sleeper. They called us out on that Trishicon video. <laughs> they called us out on that Trishicon video. Who did? The, a whole bunch of people, that 40,000 or 40 million oh, hit video. Because you, you wouldn't pull the trigger. We would just sit there and yeah. camp out, dude. We'd just sit, out, sit there and camp out and just snipe on what them. What the hell did they call it? That's what you do over <laughs> cattle, bro. That's what you do. You get a good tripod. You set your gun up on that tripod. You get situated, and you freaking bring a pillow, and you just lay there. You just lay your ass there all night long, and then that's what you do. Uh, here's a good one, though. Here's here's a good bit of info. So we have a, a specific spot where we we calve right north of here, about 400 yards, right? And it's about a, <laughs> it's it's about a, it's about a, uh, it's about a, what, how big is that that pasture or calving pasture north of the house? Probably 80, 80 acres. Yeah. Well, we go up to a spot, the junction in the road, right? And and it's a picture. It's once again, man. It's a it's a, it's almost a kill box, dude. It's it's a it's a funnel. It's a huge, massive, fatal funnel, dude. So we go up there and we sit right north, about a half a mile on a main gravel road. And from that point, dude, it's just the terrain lays as such that there's a low pivot off to the northeast and off to the north and even to the east. The road goes down low all the way for a mile, you can see. Up north of there, it's just a ridge line and a lot of rough hills that nobody messes with for four miles. Four miles back before there's anything. And the next best thing up there is the highway where most people don't dick with it anyway. They just drive right on by. It's a, it's a literal highway. We'll go out there. We'll go up there and we'll camp and take the, the hammer, the freaking wedge cutter. That's the name for it tonight. The baby arm. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll sit up there and we'll scan, long range scan, all the way across those hills. And those coyotes, coyotes will infiltrate. They will come out of those hills. They'll filter right out of those hills, and they'll jump right across that road, and they'll go right into the Kevin lot every single night. So if you can, can you, we always say, dude, you can't pattern a coyote. You can't pattern a coyote. Well, if you put a bait pile here, you can yeah. fucking pattern a coyote. You get a, a good idea of which where, direction he's going to go. Yeah, exactly. He might come from there one time <laughs> yeah. and from there another time, but he's going to go here. Yeah. So if you play the wind right, we set right there, dude, and it's a massive, um, not a kill box, but a massive fatal funnel. And, and it lures them straight into that area. And we, that one year, how many did we kill going? We called, we just <laughs> went mobile, forth, dude, back and on forth. foot for yeah. a mile on a road, yep. quiet. You, you, you just try to go, all right, I'm going to guess, man. We're going to ambush this bastard. Yep. We're going to guess that he's going to go around the pivot here and he's going to come here. Yep. And we'd prone out and dude, we killed probably a dozen that way. <laughs> yeah, at least. Before they even got into yep. the pasture. Yep. And then on nights where they wouldn't come in till way late and we didn't want to sit up there and do it, or they were getting smart and just laying out there. Yep. 
then we would go out into the lot and we'd hide in those trees. You just sit in the lot, man, and let them do what they do. And you yeah. just camp on them and smoke them. There's a lot of different ways. We, that, we could do a whole nother podcast on that. There's some dumber ways we've done it too, but yeah, just whatever it takes. Yeah. Yeah. We, we could do a whole podcast on that. Oh yeah. I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to circle it though. <laughs> and then I don't know. I don't know if I'd go into personal top five favorites because I don't, I don't really have a favorite right now. Uh, uh. The shit that we've used, you've used the, the, some really good Shizukun stuff. As soon stuff. as you really like it, then something else is there. Like that's, know. that's going to happen with us. We're going to yeah. upgrade here. I, I, I want to dude. um, the, the one of them that I want to try is the, the Envision, the Halo XRF. I mean, that thing looks like you've, it's going to be nasty. That. Yeah. And then iRay is going to come out with one too, uh, uh, an Alpha LRF. I, I'm hoping that that's out. Now, here's the thing Envision is made here. It's going to be more expensive. You're probably going to be around 9,500 to 10 grand. But man, it, it's a compact onboard recording integrated laser rangefinder, uh, a rechargeable battery pack. Uh, I don't know what the eye relief's going to be like on it. That's a huge thing for us kind of because if you look at the Mark III, a lot of guys had issues with how that LaRue mount sets straight down below the ocular lens. So the furthest that you can put that back, that ocular lens is like right above or in front of, not behind the tang of your rifle. Yep. And when you shoulder up a bolt gun, your eye relief is so far away, yep. it doesn't work. What are those? What are those mounts that come with those that Tyler sent us? Rich said they're cheap, dude. They're fucking badass. Exactly. That's what I said. I'm like I, stupid, they, like they, game changer. Stupid. You, there's no interference with your bolt throw. Nothing. You shoulder it and you get daytime optic eye relief. Yes. Just like you'd set up your best rifle yeah. for the daytime. That's the kind of eye relief you're getting with. And this, this year is the first year we've ever shot a thermal like it's supposed to be. Exactly. Game changer, like yeah. you said. Comfort. Cause, comfort because of recording reasons how we were doing it before we've never fucking shouldered a rifle you know because you weren't <laughs> we weren't you were looking at the screen dude. yeah i mean there was times where i've shot coyotes squatting down <laughs> yeah like you're squatting yeah. squatted down on the ground behind it because i got busted yep. and looked at him on the screen and pink yep i know <clears throat> so i had top five favorites man what what would you say what would you say you're right now with what we've used <clears throat> so far to date would be what you're what you like rico i'd probably be biased to that right now i i the man i if trisha Kung got their shit together i would say the mark three would be the top yep. tier dude if they had a, some kind of even onboard recording and shit i would yeah but they don't yeah uh just for and for that reason i mean obviously it's the ease it's of use man just yeah, using it you, you, being able to shoot it how it's supposed to be shot and i mean huge that wrecked me right off the bat because i've never we've never done that you know <laughs> Yeah. You push it's a like, button and let it go. And it, yeah. the one thing that dicked me that I really hated was there was no audio. That was it. Yeah. That was Which it. I didn't give a shit because I ain't. I, Fuck, I was I burned. I, I'm not, I'm not so editing pissed, anything. Dude. You know, I fucking hate. That. I was over here hitting my record button like 18 times and doing well, He's going to have fun shit. with this. Like, how do you like that shit, Ops? <laughs> oh, that's, that's fucking hilarious. Um, I, the, the, I don't know. The, the Mark III, it, it's, it, it's still good, dude. But like I said, the, the 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 way that the Rico set up right now, it's 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 simple, dude. It's gonna be a tough one to beat, and it's only gonna get better too. The one thing that I would say, the main difference that we should probably touch base on real quick, that a lot of guys for in, insight, say say the Trijicon units, other than other than the Reap, no, the Reap didn't. I like either. the Reap, dude. A lot. Did the the Reap had infinite focus, right? I like, like that. You, could, you uh, the, yeah, you couldn't you did you couldn't focus the Reap. No, it was infinite, like the yeah. Mark III. Okay, I ran that for quite a while, and I really like that. So the 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 Skeeter and the patrols, you could focus that. Yep, you could fine tune it. Now, what I what I like for video production and 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 for optical visual pleasure is on the Ricos. You can fine tune that, right? Now and it's that, seriously fine tuning it. When you recorded that coyote at the beginning of the thirty coyotes that I just put yep, up, yep, you zinged in on him. If that would have been a Chizikon unit, there would have been no justification there of clarity, optical. Right. There would have been nothing. It would have been a fuzzy blob. Yep, because that unit, those units by design are are are, are, are infinite focus. So it's for, for if you're in a rush, sure it'll work, right? But man, to be able to fine tune that Rico yep, yep. and create the depth of field in front of and yep. after your target is really nice to have. And I was on that focus the whole time. That's why I'm saying when they come out with that new focus on those, 
that adjust. That's yeah. That's, I you 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 would. I can see that too. Yeah, you yeah. would know. You yeah. would know. Um. All right. I, this is one of the last things, and it's the 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 IRA versus others, which we kind of touch base on, and then one of the main things is warranty. Yeah. And image quality. All right. The image quality is there. It rivals Envision. It rivals Trizicon. Uh, it was just a matter of time. Like Tyler said, man, here's the thing. And, and I think him and Chris put that video together but together good. Tyler made that episode that you and I watched that night. Tyler made that whole damn episode when he said, my people. Yeah. He, yes. he listens to us. Yep. No, Those big manufacturers could give two shits about guys like us yep. that, 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 that literally go out for a job and, and try to protect that. our investment. Yep. Even down in Texas, just because they kill hogs, who cares? Those hogs are wrecking people's livelihood. People that go out, those hunters that go out and take the time, Amatine, yeah, Chris, Tyler, yep. those guys that murder the shit out of those pigs, they need good equipment to go do it. Yep. And Tyler listened to us. That's where I have no, you know what? It's made overseas. Fucking, I know. I know. I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to make excuses for anybody. The government's shit over there. The people might not be. It's the fucking government. Anyway, Tyler listened to us and he sources components here and has it built to save costs over there. The Rico Alpha might even be more different. And service, warranty, all of that shit's here. Now, I'm not saying, dude, fuck, it's all the best thing since sliced bread, whatever. He listened to us and that means a lot. He, his mindset was right in line with ours and went until some of these other companies get their shit together and start paying attention to what guys like us, us want. I, I'm not going to give them the sole respect. I mean, I'm, I'm just not. Yeah. So that's a huge part in, in why I, I I'm, I'm hundred percent open. We're going to run the end vision. I'm going to run the halo right. XRF. I'll buy that bitch if I have to yep. and run it and get rid of it. Lose a few grand. I don't care. So we did the same thing with suppressors, dude. We burned a lot of money on suppressors to give guys information. We've burned a lot of barrels up. We ran a lot of stocks, a shit ton of actions. Not just so we could give guys information, but because we wanted to have good stuff and see what was going to work best for us. Yep. And we're still in that boat for thermal. But regarding warranty and price, yeah. <laughs> Envision has a five-year warranty. That's yeah. probably one of the top tier in the industry. But iRay has the five-year warranty guaranteed five-day turnaround time i asked tyler how that's gonna work if that's gonna be a shit show and he said i hope not <laughs> i mean if he makes a product and it ain't breaking down then yeah it's gonna, seriously it, it we ran we we left those things exposed for four or five hours at night in 15 below that one night i walked in to jeff's and yeah. came back there was probably that much snow on top of my bino pack and that much on my ocular all that shit melted into the scope it froze up. Yeah, we, hey, we put them through the ringer. I mean, we it ain't no different than any other thermally we did. So I'm content. I, I if if I only <clears> used it for a couple weeks or a month, I would go. You know what, man? I'm still kind of skeptical. If the alpha is the same and the alpha LRF are the same, I have no problem. Yeah, no problem running. Remember when we were running the 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 CR 123s and we on our scanners or even our 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 rifle optics, we we would. <laughs> Get them out in the cold, and we'd get back in the pickup and turn the heater on and <laughs> put them in front of the heater so I'd charge our batteries up a little bit. And it would. And it Tyler's would. like, uh, I don't think you should do that. <laughs> Whoops. I remember that <laughs> now. I for completely. I don't know if you guys should do that. I'm like, fuck. We're fucking running through batteries every 15 minutes, and if that buys you five minutes, you know, it's like. And it did. Yeah. And 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 he's like, well, I guess <laughs> if they're working through it, yeah. that's something new and to it, us. Yeah. And we were taping, we were literally taping heat, heat packs hand, to hand them. warmers, hand warmers to them, dude. We would, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, it's, it's good, it's good. Yeah. Um. Uh, what did what what's this? What's this? What's this? What 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 we're uh, uh, well, uh, uh, what? <laughs> On a good uh, Scott, dude. Okay. Oh yeah. Fuck you guys, Scott. This guy's a good dude. I've I've never I've I've sold him a suppressor, and he lives down south in Scott Hampton. And he, <laughs> fucking one night, <laughs> you and I were out at Dead Man's. Right. Remember yeah, that's exactly yeah. where I'm like, you've got to watch this fucker's video. <laughs> I laughed so hard, <laughs> my gut hurt. He sits there and he's boozing a little bit. He's all in a ghillie suit, kind of how we are in front of the fireplace. He's like. 
to show you how to call. You guys got to watch that video. If he doesn't have it up on his, on his, it's Scott Hampton, 1970, post that video up on your Instagram, dude. And so guys can watch that shit because that is the fucking funniest video. That is the best shit ever, dude. On my deathbed, I will, I will tell a really good story about a, a misidentification on a hog hunt with a coyote king. <laughs> Here's the thing, guys. I mean, fuck, don't shoot at shit. You don't know what it is, right? Yeah, it's no shit. Don't shoot at shit you don't know what it is. It's the moral of the story. If you don't want if you don't want shit dead that's not supposed to be dead, make sure you know what it is. <laughs> Fucking always. That's it, guys. I mean, uh Okay, here, here's, a, here's a good one real quick. For those This will be the last one. We're at a minute 18 or an hour 18. Logan asked about the controls of the Mark III with the turret compared to, say, the other button. Because I like the turrets. They're nice. It's all muscle memory, man. You'll get used to what you use. I'm not going to yeah. build one solid. <clears throat> I'm not going to build one complete mindset regarding one one way to operate something versus another one because the rico is simple as shit dude it's easy you got you got four buttons but it's like that's you said, it muscle memory four buttons you got the very first one that powers it up you quick quick tap it internal shutter nukes it yep you got your next button magnification if you yep. need to boom 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 or press and hold it picture Which and picture is a little lower Sets so a little lower. Yep. And on the alpha, they're going to be different. Yeah, yes. but I don't know what yes. they're. The next one's menu. You can hit that bitch, and it'll cycle through your menus. You can change your polarity. You can change fine-tune stuff. Go into yep. zero settings. And then the next one closest is your record. Or camera. Or camera. Quick press for a, yep. for a picture. Long press for a record. It's easy. A lot of guys are like, oh, dude, I don't know. You don't need to be able to identify those with Braille. And the, and the focus is see. on the top. That's that's instead of out on the end on the yeah. ocular, yeah. Ocular. It's just at the top. It's yep. just like the pulsar trail. That's where it is. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, you like I said, you don't need to be able to to feel any kind of braille, even though there is. It's you know what they are, man. Yep. Four fingers done. I'm not trying to sell it. It's just this is our take on it, guys. That's how it is. This is what we like about them. You can take it with a grain of salt. Or... Scott wasn't the shooter, by the way. <laughs> that's good, dude. It's all right, even if you were. Okay, we're going to get off, man. Hey, we appreciate it too. Uh, anytime, uh, we're down to 23. A lot of people lose lose uh, interest in this, I know. It'd be cool to get, you know, we're getting a couple thousand listeners on the Anchor platform probably. And then again, maybe 1,500 to a couple thousand on the YouTube platform. It's definitely not our most uh, interesting or entertaining stuff. These are the guys, you guys are the fellows that, that, are really genuine and interested in learning more. Maybe n not so much about what we do uh, on everyday, regarding everyday life, but you just want to know more stuff about equipment, you know, and, and if we can provide that to you, then then awesome. Uh, hopefully we can. I, I just, you know, th there's certain things in the hunting industry, fellas, that you just, you don't, uh, you don't, you can't cover I mean, you can, but you, you come to a full circle, right? You get to a point where, hey, man, we've already talked about this numerous times. We've, this is the third time we've talked about thermal. So I don't know if, fellas, if you guys are, are not paying attention, and I'm, we're not going to get mad at you for it. I, I'm just not sure if you didn't know where the hell. Fuck you guys. Quit listening to us. <laughs> if you're not if you're not paying attention or you didn't know we've got them all labeled easy on the on the anchor platform on the youtube channel i've created a whole separate playlist on the youtube channel easier and hell to navigate you can go through see what we've got going on um there's a ton of information that's where we can break it down we can create a circle that's 10 times bigger than most guys can regarding podcasts and information because there's so many different things that we do uh, in, in, in the industry regarding not, not, you know, going big game hunting all over the country, all over the world, uh, shooting numerous species, but doing tons of different things do using, uh, you know, we, we, this barrel manufacturer versus that one at our own expense, this twist rate versus that one at, at our own expense, this caliber versus this caliber, this cartridge versus this cartridge, this powder versus this powder. What are we finding out with the federal gold medal match two tens versus a uh, BR twos? 
uh, powder dispensers, the new match masters versus the old charge masters, uh, presses, the f- coax versus the rock chucker versus the Dylan for, for, for handguns. Fuck, dude. I mean, there, we can do all sorts of stuff, but there's such a small niche of guys or small group of guys for each individual thing that we like to do. Uh, it's just not going to provide, you know, probably us with a lot of followers is what I'm getting at. <laughs> Especially so, listening to your ass mumble. I know it. I'm just trying to say, man, tons of different <clears throat> stuff. Anyway, lots of different stuff. Just anything that we in anything that <clears throat> that we enjoy doing that you guys want to have us key in on, by all means. That's what we kind of thrive on for the podcast is more information to get out there. So uh that's why we always ask questions. This is kind of an easy podcast for us. It's fun too. So uh, we're going to keep on keeping on fellas. We're probably going to go out and take a cruise real quick. We're going to take the God hammer out and do some scanning. I got to pull some all nighters. My dad and my brother bolted out on me. That's Keith came out and helped feed, uh, got a 600 head that are Kevin, uh, check at eight at 10 at 12 at two. And then I got to wake my ass up at six and I'm not complaining about it. I ain't getting up at six. It's fun, dude. It's fun. I like that shit. I love it. I wouldn't do have any. I wouldn't do anything else than sitting here and bullshit with you guys in between. So, I'm gonna kill the. Actually, I'm gonna leave it on, but the the Instagram live. But we're gonna be we're gonna be tuning out here once again. Uh, we've had Keith Rissy with lots of information. One of the trigger pullers kills fucking a lot of coyotes every year. I told him this year. He said, "Dude, you should just say James. I'm out, bro." <laughs> I'm going north. I'm going up to freaking. I'm going with Mitch and Logan. I'm going to Meserly <laughs> land, and I'm going to fucking come back with 600, with 800. I'm going to go for four months and just murder I'm mode. I'm going to go kill with some real killers. <laughs> Instead of sitting out here and killing only a couple hundred in about a month with you, little pussy ass, doing the same thing over and over and over. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys find it informative, informational. Uh, anything else that you guys want to hear, be sure to uh, check out. Hey, you, I'll always put a plug in for Keith. Your your ins- uh, ops underscore pro staff. Ops under, underscore pro staff. Mine is O'Neill Ops. Check out our YouTube channel. Check out uh, the O'Neill Ops Facebook page, O'Neill Ops Instagram. we got a lot of presence out there. Got a lot of reviews, a lot of information coming out there for you guys. Once again, I'm James O'Neill, and this has been the Predator Hunter Podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Anchor. It'll be up on YouTube soon. And we are... Out.